You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. You are listening to Lisa, Lisa Smith Putnam on your pets, my dogs. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. How about we say wherever you are, how about a great big hello? I'm very excited because today on the line, I have Mr. Jeremy Cohen. I say Mr. Jeremy Cohen, and I guess I need to add there ESQ. Jeremy is a, or I should say, an attorney from Boston. And you are going to be very excited about what this particular attorney specializes in. So sit back, relax, or should I say stay? That's what I tell my three dogs, because we will be right back. Nature at its best is nature at its simplest. At Red Barn, we've kept it simple for 20 years by concentrating on single-ingredient natural dog treats. Because Mother Nature's actually pretty good at this. Bones are just tasty bones. Meat treats are just nourishing meat. It's nature at its simplest. Look at the label. We want you to. Red Barn Natural Treats. Simply the best. Find it in your local pet specialty store. Try our slow-roasted natural meaty bones. You love your dog and getting kisses from them. But their breath can be downright stanky. Knock out their smelly breath with Stank Be Gone. Stank Be Gone is made with natural ingredients to eliminate their bad breath while helping to reduce plaque and tartar. Just add a capful to your dog's drinking water. Stank Be Gone is only $19.95. Use promo code STANK to receive a second bottle for just $5. Go to stankbegone.com today. That's stankbegone.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the Your Pets, My Dogs radio show. I am your host, Lisa Smith Putnam. And today we welcome on the Your Pets, My Dog show, Mr. Jeremy Cohen. And Jeremy is a fantastic attorney from Boston. Comes by way of Boston. Jeremy, are you there? I'm here in the middle of a snowstorm, but I'm here. (laughs) Well, I'd like to say we feel for you, but we just finished one heck of a rainstorm and wind and gust and all that good stuff. So Mother Nature is just saying, hey, I love you, I think. (laughs) All right, then we're even. So did your, uh, you just finished the snowstorm. Did your dog get out there and have some fun in the snow? Oh, that's the best part of the snow. Got her out this morning for a good little hike. Digging in the snow, burying your face in the snow, got some good pictures. Yeah, fun, fun time. I, I do believe snow for dogs is uh, heaven on earth, but I'm going right. to have you circle back around in a few minutes and talk about your dog and your life with your dog. But before I do that, I know people are probably chomping to bits. They're probably saying, Lisa, okay, well, who is this guy? And how does he relate to your pets, my dog's world? You know, the animal friendly space that we live in. Jeremy, we know that your name is Jeremy Cohen, but what exactly do you do? Great question. So, uh, <laughs> Thank I, you. <laughs> I, I started a firm, Boston Dog Lawyers, uh, about a year ago. And when I started my own practice as a lawyer about seven years ago, I didn't even know that, it, that animal lawyers existed. And one day I got a call. My stepkids had a dog with their dad, a German shepherd named Jesse. Just a great dog, and I got a call that Jesse was was being accused of biting somebody, mm. and there would be a hearing, small town hearing with the border selectman. And I went not knowing what I was going to face, and I was shocked by what went down at this meeting. At the same time, I got to see how important these decisions that might be made are to families. I mean, this brought us closer as a family. Now suddenly my stepkids are looking to me to sort of rescue the dog, and their dad and I had a lot of conversations. So it was it was good for the family dynamics. It was a rallying point for all of us. Mm-hmm. And that night at the hearing, uh, they voted to kill Jesse, and I was astonished. There was crowds of people there chanting for him to for him to be killed. And that night I heard something that I've heard so many times since then. And it was the person who voted ultimately to kill Jesse said, "Please don't get me wrong. I love dogs." 
And my feeling is, how about loving facts? Because mm-hmm. what they didn't hear that night was, was any facts. Nobody delivered any evaluation of Jesse. They never had him examined by a behaviorist. They just listened to the loudest voice in the room, and they said, that's it, we'll kill Jesse. And it's, it's the facts in the room that should win, not the loudest voice. And that, that lit a fire for me, and I've been involved ever since. Wow. When you were speaking, what resonated with me, well, several things. You said it was actually good for the family. And here you have two different families coming together because, or or I should say, to create this wonderful bond because of a major issue, because of one of the children being in need of help. And everyone that listens to the show here, they know that I believe that, you know, I say pet kids, I call us pet parents, and people are like, Lisa, why do you say that? And I think, Jeremy, you will agree that... You know, when you have an animal, a lot of people will say, oh, well, it's just a pet. And yeah, yeah, okay, I heard you, I heard you. But I also say to folks, to many a people out there, and I know because I've spoken to many a people, that animal, cat, bird, bearded dragon, dog, rabbit, chinchilla, we could just go on down the list, horse, you know, that's their, their pet kid. And they are so deeply embedded into their hearts. And so when something happens, whether they're, whether their pet kid is sick or it passes away, our hearts, man, they just, you know, they, they, we grieve because we love them that much. And so when I received an email from your publicist marketing team in regards to who you are and what it is that you do, I was very fascinated because even though there are so many people like myself that we are, you know, animal advocates to the positive and, and want to, you know, make sure that the right thing is done, rarely do I have the opportunity to run across an expert such as yourself that really specializes, gets in those nooks and crannies and fills those voids to understand the letter of the law as it relates to, to pets. It's an outlet like this that helps so much just to spread the word that whether it's me that you utilize or not, there's lawyers out there that can help you. You're not defenseless when things like this happen. And the Jesse story, what I realize is I can do this for other families too. Mm-hmm. This is what happens every time there's a decision made about a dog, whether it's to punish the dog or kill the dog. I can be the person that I understand the facets of a family and how important the dog is. As you're saying, it's another child. And it reaches to the nieces and nephews and aunts and uncles because everybody knows that family dog. Right. I want to give everyone your website address right now. It's bostondoglawyers.com. So Boston Dog Lawyers, and put an S on the end. Make sure you have lawyers.com. And when you, when you pull up the website, you'll get a wonderful chuckle right away. Okay, I have to give a spoiler alert. I have to, Jeremy. <laughs> when you go to his website, the first thing you'll see is this wonderful golden retriever that comes up. I mean, there, there are many pictures, but the first picture that comes up is this wonderful golden retriever, and he has on a, a, a jail cap. And uh, it really catches your eye, and, and it kind of sets the, the wonderful good tone about what Jeremy does here. Jeremy, let me ask you this. Because your practice isn't 100% working for the, I'll say, the betterment of protecting the animals. You are a criminal defense attorney as well, is that correct? No, I do some civil work. Uh, mm-hmm. in, I've been an attorney for almost 20 years, so there's there's other work to do. But what, what I'm trying to accomplish by um, sort of unveiling Boston Dog Lawyers is that my firm will now specialize in defending pets, mm-hmm. defending the pet owner's rights, defending the dogs, and all the other issues that come with being a pet owner, custody issues, whether or not you can have a pet in a condominium complex. So it's vast when it comes to pets, but we're really trying to focus just on pet owners. And, Mm -hmm. you know, it's Boston dog lawyers, but that's because Boston's my brand. I love Boston. I grew up here, but we actually are in many states. We have many affiliates. So we're able to help people around the country. And almost every day I hear a new type of of issue that comes up. We just we just landed a parakeet as a client. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, I know you can't discuss that case, but the reason I asked if you were, you know, 
working on, I'll say, saving the animals is because I was going to say, I sure wish it was. (laughs) All right. Well, your wish just came true. Because I just think it's so important and so powerful for people to feel that they have a, a voice and they might not know everything. And I'm not saying that you know everything. I, I think that you are one smart cookie, but I know that you understand the law and, and how it relates to you know the animals. Because I've heard cases of friends going to visit a friend and they have maybe their child with them and the dog that resides at their friend's house. You know, it's not used to being around pets. And so the child might, you know, pull on it and tug on it and the dog nips them. Right. And that's a really sticky case because here you have really great friends and now you have one of the friends whose child has been, you know, nibbled or whatever. And, you know, how do you tell someone, hey, you got to make sure that your child understands these pets are not play toys. And right. I mean, some of them are big, lovable you know, cushy, bushy bears like my three dogs. But but when they come in contact with a child, we're never quite sure what's going to happen. And so one thing that's important is it's not me versus the victim. Mm-hmm. Because typically the victim, they'll get the medical treatment they need. And if there was some negligence, they may even get some compensation. But it's it's me trying to calm everybody down and see that this probably wasn't the dog's fault. It's probably not a dangerous dog because of, of a, one particular incident. In, which is why it's important we are unveiling and teaming up with people, behaviors, veterinarians, to, to have a, a program where we teach people, teach children, how to interact with dogs. So a huge majority of dog bites take place with children who are 12 and under, and a high percentage of them are not supervised by adults. And we spend so much time focusing on retraining the dog, and the dog should have done this or, or done that. Let's train the victims before they become victims. Let's educate kids by going into schools, spending a half hour showing them this is how you interact with the dog, this is how you approach a dog, and these are the things that you should be looking for. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I appreciate your you were commenting on my intellect, but I also know that there's people who are much smarter than me out there, mm-hmm. which is why I team up with trainers and behaviors so we can we can educate people and then you won't need me as much, which is which is fine with me. We won't have to keep dogs off of death row. Well, you know, I I would like to say, man, I wish that we wouldn't need you because that means that everyone's getting along and and we're all kumbayaing together. And I I think even in a perfect world, you have people that don't mean to push the limits and the boundaries, but it just happens. And so I think there'll always be a need for someone to be a, a mediator between you know, right and right and wrong and wrong and, and try and find a middle ground for everyone to, you know, exist peacefully. At least that's what you, you know, wish for, I think, in, in a perfect world. And I know... That's what I try to do mm-hmm. when I get a new case. I always reach out to the town officials first to say, let's, let's look at some facts. Let's see uh, where this case is going to go. Let's see if we can resolve it now. I understand that they have a burden to protect the town and to show that they've taken steps, but... There's so many things we can do besides killing a dog. We are much smarter as a society than some of these decisions that come down would make you believe. Well, and I always start off with a reasonable offer of settlement. Unfortunately, at least uh, in Massachusetts, it's very rarely taken in the beginning. So the great thing is I'm in this till the end, and that's what dog parents know. Wherever it goes, I'm with you, and we never surrender. Well, and let me ask you this, because I know we're saying dogs this morning, but you actually, you just said that you also have just taken on a a parakeet, but you will, I mean, cats, for example, right? Right. And the more uh, exposure through folks like you that I'm getting, the more people are saying, please change it to Boston Pet Lawyers. Mm -hmm. You have to change it to Boston Pet Lawyers because I'm learning, which is I do every day, and I'm learning how, how prevalent issues with cats are. I, I had no idea. And so we are not um, species-specific any longer. And I'm amazed at how many people have cats and have issues with them. And the cat to the cat owner is just as important as, the, as my dog is to me. Oh, absolutely. Our parent company, 
and I shared this with you earlier, but our parent company, Simply Pets Magazine, that is due out later on this year, the reason that we're not calling it Simply Dog or Simply Cat or Simply Parakeet is because in doing our research, we've spoken to so many people that, that are multi-species household. And they want a magazine, a product that they can read and pick up that will have a little bit of everything for their lifestyle, their house. And so, you know, I, I don't want you to have to go and change a whole bunch of letterhead and all of that. But <laughs> <laughs> but that, Boston Pet Lawyers, yeah, that would be fantastic. But for now, everyone, find him at bostondoglawyers.com and you'll find a lot of great information there. But, Jeremy, I want to ask you, what is the most... Is it help me because I'm not an attorney? I just play one on the radio. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Tell me, what is the number one thing that you hear a lot? Is it a dog biting someone, or what's the number one thing that you hear coming across or coming into your office? Initially, it was a dog biting somebody, and but what's happening now is it's dogs. It's an owner having multiple dogs where one dog may have bit someone, and now the, the town or the city wants to take all the dogs from the owner. Mm. And simply because they're either, they assume that if one dog bit, they all will, or they're trying to punish the owner by taking the dogs. And they don't mean taking the dogs and rehoming them. Mm -hmm. They mean taking them and, and putting them down. And that's, it's disturbing because these dogs did nothing. And I have a few cases going on right now where it's, everyone admits, even the victim admits, that that dog didn't bite. It was just there. But it's sort of a, an effort right now just to try to rid cities and towns of any dog that could do something. They deal too much in what ifs. Mm -hmm. We need to deal in what is. And so you deal with whatever action the dog did and not plan ahead as to what if her other dogs or his other dogs act a certain way. It's made it so that we've developed a new motto, which is never surrender. Mm -hmm. And when somebody gets pulled over in a drunk driving accident, lawyers always say, don't take the breathalyzer. Well, here, if, if the animal control officer comes to your house and says you need to surrender your dogs, never surrender. This always helped. There's always something to do and because there's always another side to the story, which they, unfortunately, they're choosing not to hear right now, but mm -hmm. someone like me can, can uh, help educate them about what else really happened at the scene. So what should we do? And this is a good uh, information that you're, they're sharing. If by chance you come into that situation and you do get the knock on the door, you're saying, be nice and you know, right. don't, don't get irate, but let them know you're not surrendering your pet to them. And then what's the next step? We reach out for you if we're in Boston or one of your affiliates in, a, in another state. Now, there is one exception. If, if they come to your door with a court order, at that time, you, you should um, follow the court order. But short mm -hmm. of that, you're entitled to a hearing. So we know in this country, animals don't have rights because they're property. And I get asked a lot, well, you are, are you an animal rights attorney? Well, I'm a dog owner's rights attorney or a pet owner's rights attorney because there's people in this country that still don't have all the rights that they should. So right. the chance of dogs or animals getting their rights through a constitutional amendment right now, that's a long haul, and we need to deal with the problem that's happening today. Mm -hmm. So as part of your constitutional rights as owning this property, you are entitled to a hearing when it's taken, and you're entitled to a fair hearing. So sometimes there'll be a hearing, but it's not fair. So you want to make sure that you can exercise your right to have a hearing. And at that hearing, you need to bring everything you can to defend against whatever charges are coming. And sometimes that's to bring a lawyer as well. Uh, people will can do it on their own. They don't necessarily need a lawyer. But obviously, I think it helps because you may be able to just solve everything right there. Right. So, Jeremy, what can we do? Because the one thing that I hear, I think most people say... If they're out walking a dog or at a you know a park, not not a dog park, but at a park, they'll say there's a leash law. There's a leash law. Put your dog on a leash because I believe in most states. Again, I'm thinking there is there is a leash law, and so that's the number one thing dog owners know. Other than that, I don't think we the people know many more rights than than that now perhaps i do because i host a pet radio show and right. have this magazine and and all of this stuff so i'm more entrenched in the pet culture world than most folks and 
you know, there's so much information out there. You know, you don't have to take a course to get a pet. You can go anywhere. And if you have, you know, adoption money and all of this, that you can get a pet or you'll get one because a friend has a litter. So how can we educate ourselves in finding out what some of the basic rights are? Okay. So along with the rights to ownership comes responsibility, uh, of course. So one thing I've done to learn more is I've joined some organizations, so the International Association of Animal Behavior Consultants. So now I can team up with them and run a specific case by them and say, what, what happened here or why, or what could have prevented it? Mm-hmm. Same with I joined the Association of Professional Dog Trainers. So it's a little difficult for them because I'm, pro- I'm one of the few lawyers that have joined those groups that are not sure what to make of me yet. But what I've been <laughs> learning is... The leash is vital. Now, not every state has a leash law, and within the states, not every town abides by a leash law. So we have some some towns out in western Massachusetts where there is no leash law. But if you have your dog on a leash, you're cutting down on so many uh, potential problems. Mm-hmm. Another item, when they go to try to take your dog and to, to sort of uh, reinforce the fact that you have, have the rights to, to dog ownership and to keep it, you want to make sure that all the dog's records are up to date. Rabies vaccine is in place. If you're in a location where your dog has to be registered and licensed, have it up to date. There's so many factors that we need to show that you are a responsible dog owner or pet owner or pet keeper in order to show that you this was just a, a one-time thing, if anything really happened, the type of leash you use, and did you apologize? So if a dog... Mm, uh, I like that. If a dog does something bad or scares somebody or bites somebody, it's okay as the keeper or owner to say, I'm sorry. You're not admitting liability. You're sorry for what happened between the dog and either another dog, another animal, or a person. There's so many cases I've had where if they had just said they were sorry, I think it would have gone away without any exchange of money. But sometimes you get too defensive too fast, and that's unfortunately what our society has taught people. So we miss that basic thing of saying, I'm sorry. Another important thing is getting in and out of your car. And then, again, it's to prevent the dog bites. I'm straying a little bit from, from rights to ownership. But no, that's okay. So many dog bites happen when you're getting in or out of your car because we're usually at home when that happens and we're relaxed. So the leash might be not on the dog or you just get casual for a second or you're carrying bundles. And that's when the dog has a, has a split second to get away and do something. There's so many preventative measures we can take before something happens. I was sitting here and I was just listening to you. And as you were speaking, I just kept going back and replaying that I'm sorry. Because I I think when you said in a lot of cases, you would have been able to settle without money transferring hands if the person had just said, I'm sorry. And it sounded like, you know, that, that one thing that makes us human, you know, we become animalistic from, well, I guess we're animals and yet humans. Help me on this, Jeremy. But my point, my point is the, no, very, right there. Yeah, the, the very thing that makes us these incredible beings, we seem to, to lose in that moment. And by offering up those, those words that mean so much and people want to hear. And I'm glad that you said saying I'm sorry is not an admission of, of guilt, but you're saying, listen, I'm sorry for what happened. And that goes a long way, and I, I think it's indicative of where we are as uh, you know, society today. Those few things that I learned as a kid, please, thank you, you're welcome. Right. You know, we, we somehow have lost in the, in the busyness of the day. Absolutely, and they matter. I, please I, and thank you go a long way still. Yeah, and I, I think they do matter as well. Well, Jeremy, we're going to take a quick break, and I mean ever so quick, almost running down the street and back, I guess. (laughs) And we will be right back. My Golden Retriever Sundance is a lot more playful now. She has more pep and energy than I've seen in years. Tons of energy. Petey is having fun again. He's got a shiny coat and a good healthy weight. Molly's been having four scoops a day. She pushes her little bowl all the way across the room, emptying every last single crumb. She has slimmed down and gotten this puppy look. She's got life. She's got energy. She's got stuff to give. We get asked all the time when we're at shows, 
how do you get your dog so healthy and shiny and glossy? D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. 859-428-1000. The omega-3 fatty acids. Flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa. The digestive enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. The family will be on Dynavite for the rest of his life. Just feed your dog right. Use Dynavite. If it's working, don't quit. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Hi, I'm Lisa Smith-Putnam, and I'm the host of Your Pets, My Dogs, right here on Pet Life Radio. I'm excited to let you know that I have a brand new pet magazine coming out called Simply Pets Magazine. To grab your copy, please go to www.simplypetsmagazine.com. We will deliver it digitally or on a newsstand near you or in your mailbox. Take care. Thank you. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. If you have a question about your pets, your pet's ever kit, then you need to call your pets, my dogs, pet a kit. That's pet a kit. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here's your pet etiquette for today. Hi, I'm sound engineer Bill. If you don't have a pet, but are considering getting one, please do the research to know how much attention your chosen animal requires versus how much time you have available to spend with the critter. Cats need significant attention. Dogs need way more than cats. Birds need way more than dogs. For example, if you have a parrot and leave him or her alone all day every day you go to work, the poor bird will suffer intense mental torture from the loneliness and develop permanent mental illness. A cat will probably adjust to this schedule without too much trouble. A tortoise can be happy with very little human contact at all. So, do your homework before you make the commitment and choose a companion that is compatible with your life schedule. That's Pet Kit. Well, welcome back. You're listening to Your Pets, My Dogs, and I'm your host, Lisa Smith Putnam, and we are having a great conversation with Mr. Jeremy Cohen. He is an attorney out of Boston, and the name of his firm is Boston Dog Lawyers. We are petitioning. I'm starting the petition right now, today, Jeremy, to have you change it to Boston Pet Lawyers because you are one of my favorite people by far. You're out there oh. not just serving the people, but serving our pets. Yay! <laughs> Thank you. That's encouraging. That's, that's great feedback. And every time somebody says that, that, it's a great, honorable use of your profession and my license to practice. It means, means a ton because you don't, for many years, I didn't get to hear that as a lawyer. So oh. it, it means a lot. I know it's sincere. Absolutely. And I don't want to speak for every pet parent out there, but it's, I think it is so awesome that you do what you do because you unfortunately have a lot of people that will need your help. And that's a good thing to have someone like you. Jeremy, I want to go back something that I said um, halfway through the first segment. We were speaking about you handling a variety of cases, dog and cats, and you had mentioned that you had just received a case in regards to a parakeet. And I said very quickly, I know you can't say anything about the case, but is there something that you can maybe on the peripheral share about the parakeet case? Because I think it's it. this is perhaps a little bit different than what you're doing or have done with some of the other cases before. This is involving, you know, veterinarian. So Right. And this is the exciting thing too about being in this field because suddenly I got a call from a woman who owns a Quaker parakeet. And to be honest with you, there I am Googling Quaker parakeet. I was going to <laughs> I haven't had a parakeet. I was just about but to Google it real also, quick. <laughs> that's also as a lawyer, that's what I'm supposed to be able to do is to submerge myself quickly in a topic and come out understanding it. So I like that challenge. Here, uh, she's had her parakeet for about 10 years, and the parakeet's projected to outlive her. And she went to a specialist in our state. There's only three avian specialists in our state. Mm-hmm. And she, she brought her bird there. bird was having a, a problem, uh, an intestinal problem, and the vet 
uh, had an assistant or a junior vet handling the bird. And I, apparently what I've learned is there's a certain way you're supposed to handle the bird, especially uh, when it's out of its habitat, out of its home, where it's comfortable. They stress very easily. So here, the veterinarian allegedly did not hold the bird properly, so she started flapping and then got so stressed she went to bite the vet. And if it's handled properly, there should be no ability for this bird to bite. Mm -hmm. And instead, the bird bit her toe off. And with only three toes and they sleep standing up, the toe is hanging. And she ended up having to go six nights in the hospital so far uh, in Boston and they haven't even contemplated how to reattach it yet. This was just to, because she couldn't sleep, she needed to be sedated and, uh, and medicated before they can figure out what's the next step with this bird. And I heard in this woman's voice, she had no children, and this was her baby. And I thought about you know my baby, my, my golden uh, Maisie, and it became personal. It's as though it happened to me. So now we're pursuing a, a negligence case against the veterinarian. I, I don't like to have to pursue that because I think vets do a great job. But here, this woman, she had an expectation. She went to a place where they're supposed to have a higher awareness of how to deal with birds. They're specialists. And then this happened. And, and maybe they'll be able to show that, no, it, it wasn't the doctor's fault. But that's why we at least make a claim and allow uh, facts to be presented so we can figure this thing out. Wow. And let me just say this for everyone listening. I have dealt with so many attorneys throughout my lifetime, not because I needed them, (laughs) but because I have ran various companies and I've represented various artists throughout my my life and and various companies as well. And so when you have such large transactions, you always have a variety of attorneys because there are so many different specialty areas, you know, licensing contracts, so on and so forth. And that's why there's so many attorney jokes because you have some that are fantastic and you have so many that are bad. And what is a bad attorney? Well, it depends on who you are and it depends on who you're speaking with. And one thing I want to say is as a, a layman, when I'm looking for an attorney, I'm looking for an attorney that understands what it is I am saying. And I don't want an attorney just because I think that they're going to go in there and slug the other team. I want them to have a heart and feel because even though they have to go in and try and figure out the best road for me, they're going to do it with such grace and style and be very forceful because we want to win, but not mean. And so I think a lot of people are fearful. I can't even speak. See, I get emotional about it myself. I think a lot of people are fearful when you have to think about engaging an attorney for your your own defense or when you have to speak to an attorney. And I just want to say you, Jeremy, in my personal humble opinion, you're the sort of attorney that I think is stellar. That's just friggin' awesome. You, your heart radiates. Wow. Well, but no, you, your heart radiates through. I mean, you want, so people, you know, that are listening, you want to find someone that you feel comfortable with. Because if you feel comfortable with them, you know they're going to do the best job by you. And so, Jeremy, when you were saying, yeah, you know, she didn't have any children and she's like, this is my kid. And I thought about my own, you know, dog. That means a lot. And well, that's, that's good to know. Because yeah. I, I feel it. And I do love at the end of a conversation, the person saying, boy, I was dreading having to call you, but I feel so much better now. Or they cried during the call and they said, wow, you made me feel so much better. Because I feel like uh, that's what I'd want oh, <laughs> if, yeah. if I called someone in need. And I'm not judging anyone, but I'm I'm very fortunate that 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 comes through. And thank you for pointing that out. Oh, absolutely. Because I think, you know, maybe call me a dreamer, but I think most people are good. And, you know, stuff happens. And when it happens, you want someone who's going to approach it in a manner that is good. Stern, but good. Not go in there and try and, you know, get them under the belt and got you in the gut, that sort of thing. No. Right, right. I just think we can accomplish more if we if we could just sit down and talk reason and see exactly what everybody's trying to get out of something. Right. 
Well, let's circle the wagons and and go back to your dog, the one that loves the snow, <laughs> and and the Amazing one that man. you were just speaking about moments ago. So her name is Maisie, right? And My stepdaughter Alex named her M A I S E Y. I love it. So tell us about Maisie. How old and what color? You know all the stuff we want to know. All right, boy, that this could take hours. Uh, when, when <laughs> you I truly are a pet like, parent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she is two and a half, mm-hmm. and she is daddy's little girl. She is definitely the girl I never had. Um, mm. She is everything's a game to her, and that's what I love about her. It, she could be sleeping, and then suddenly, if if I feel like playing, she'll wake right up and play with me. It some mornings it takes me two hours from the time I wake up to the time <laughs> I leave for work. Because I just, I just can't get enough of her playing around the house or running around outside. See, I don't feel so yeah. bad now because usually I'm ready to leave and go to my appointment, but I start running late because you know I have three dogs, and so somebody right. always wants to play, if not all three. I can't imagine having three. <laughs> Maisie loves the beach, so we're fortunate. We, we really wanted to introduce her to the ocean because we live by the ocean, and now wintertime, summertime, as long as we can bring the dog to a particular beach, she she goes in the waves. She's she's fearless. A couple of weeks ago, there was a storm, and she really wanted to go in the water. I let her in, and I was timing it so the waves wouldn't be too big for her. Usually, every seventh wave is the biggest wave. Well, all of a sudden, the waves didn't came out know that. lifted Maisie up, dropped her under the water, and there were people watching. And all of a sudden, Maisie's head popped up. She just shook it off and looked around for her for her toy <laughs> to retrieve her toy. She just wanted to get that toy back. And people people were clapping. They were sighing with relief that Maisie resurfaced. And then I did uh, I did loose her up and get out of there before somebody <laughs> tried to uh, get me in trouble. But Maisie was she was having too good a time. Wow. I love that. I, you know, and you're absolutely correct. That's the true sign of a pet parent when you can spend hours talking about your pet and not even uh, miss a beat or you have your phone. And if you have a thousand pictures, 998 are of your pet kids. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I didn't know that every seventh wave is the biggest. Bill, did you know that? Well, I've well, I've definitely heard of things like rogue waves. Uh, oh, that, I don't know what the numbers are, but uh, yeah, you can sometimes get an unexpected wave that is much larger than the ones you have been seeing. Oh wow! Okay, so it, I believe my rule of seven is correct, but it's not. It may not be in any law. It's just that's the way I was raised. But I, I might have to fact check that later. But that's what I, I sort of count. For well, her. we love getting the Rule facts seven. here on Your Pets, My Dog. So I, I love it when I learned something that I didn't know before. And even if it's 107, I had no idea that it could be figured out. So thank you for bringing that up. But Jeremy, There's one thing that oh, go ahead, my dear. Known, uh, if I could share this too. Absolutely. It, it does relate to being a dog owner. When there is a, an incident or even before an incident, what someone's wearing is extremely important. If they're wearing stripes, it makes a big difference in how the dog accepts them and interprets them. If they're horizontal versus vertical stripes, this is why dogs and Dalmatian dogs have such a problem because someone like Maisie, she sees a Dalmatian, but she, it, she has a hard time processing what that is because of the spots. So that's something that I've learned recently wow. in some of the things I've been studying. And it, it actually can be a factor to say, see, we don't have a dangerous dog. They were actually just the stripes or the polka dots. These, it matters, and it, it just impacted the dog a certain way. Holy smokes. I love it. I love you, Jeremy, because you just help me with my future interviews when I am speaking to other people. That, but that makes sense, what you just said. Wow. So, Jeremy, I'm putting you on the spot right here, right now. I think, because you're kicking off my new year of shows here, I think my readers, my readers, no, that's for the magazine. <laughs> I think my listeners probably would love to have you come back and, and do little segments with me here on the Your Pets, My Dog show from time to time, because this is, you know, great stuff. People have questions, and I would love to, you know, have you come on board and, and just every now and then, you know, throw out some wonderful morsels and tidbits to us, as you did with this show, because it is a much-needed 
you know, thing out there with us pet wow. parents. It is so important that we understand what our rights are and what the rights are for our, you know, our pet kids. Those of us, I do not, but those that have, you know, the human children, you have a really good understanding because there's so much knowledge out there. But for the pet parent, sometimes we find ourselves kind of lost out there in, in space. So, Jeremy, we're kidnapping you and we're bringing you back. Absolutely. Oh, I love that. Yeah, I, that's a great opportunity to be on a show like yours with the the popularity of it and and what you've been teaching folks. That's an honor that you would consider having me back. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. Well, dear sir, I tell you what, we are going to. Well, let me ask you this: Is there anything else during this interview that you'd like to share with my listening audience? I know I can tell you already; they are going to uh, give some really good feedback about this show. But is there anything that you want to make sure that we throw out there before I let you go? Sure. Thank you. The part we haven't talked about is the business end of it. So you hire a lawyer and there's fees. Myself, Boston Dog Lawyers, we're, we understand that it, cost is a factor, but I, I would hate for somebody not to, to come forward to seek help because they don't think that they could afford an attorney. Mm. Uh, I mean, it is a business and it's, it's hard to do everything for free, but we offer payment plans, uh, reduced fees, and, and my commitment, at least for this year, is I commit one year, one week for the entire year, work week. So for me, a work week is 65 hours. Mm-hmm. I will do 65 hours of pro bono work in mm-hmm. 2016. So it's, it's sort of a, you know, first come, first serve. And if there's a strong need and you can, you can provide evidence that you don't have an ability to pay, well, I don't want you to miss out on being able to keep your pet. So we will just deduct from the uh, 65 hours of pro bono work. So please don't hesitate because of costs with me or with any other attorney. I think you might find that with a lot of animal attorneys out there. Wow, you are an incredible spirit, and we are very lucky to have you walking around on this big earth place that we all inhabit. Thank Thank you so much for that. And I'm glad that I asked you that because, yeah, the cost is a, a factor always, and a lot of people... You know, that have pets, sometimes it is very difficult to take care of everything, the vet bill and this, that, and the other thing. And so, bless you, Mr. Jeremy Cohen. Woohoo! Good egg you Thank are. You. you crack me up. <laughs> <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is Boston Dog Lawyers. And that's Boston Dog Lawyers. Put that S on the end, bostondoglawyers.com. You can find Mr. Jeremy Cohen, ESQ, the dog liability defense attorney there. And you can find his number and all the uh, wonderful things about his practice. And if you have any questions, please give him a call and he will point you in the right direction. We'll also make sure that we put up all the great information about Jeremy and his practice on the Your Pets, My Dogs website. Okay, Mr. Jeremy Collin, have a fantastic rest of your day. We look forward to bringing you back here. And we'll, you know, I'll say maybe once a month we'll have you come on board and just uh, hang out with us a little bit and let That's us know. Great. Yeah, and let us know what's that happening. That would be great. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this has been Lisa Smith Putnam with the Your Pets, My Dogs radio show. Woohoo! We are always excited to hear from you. So drop us a line if there's a subject that you want us to reach out and interview and cover. We're there. We're there for you. All right. I think I got to go play with my dogs. I don't have to play with them. I want to go play with them. So I'm out of here. We will be with you next week. Bye-bye. Now, you know I cannot leave without thanking you, my wonderful listening audience. Just wanted to say thank you to you. We have listeners all the way from New York City down to South Africa over to India. That's how far we reach. You can find us at yourpetsmydogs.com. Shoot us an email if you've got a question or thought process for us. We're always there for you. And let me not forget to thank my wonderful studio staff. That would be our wonderful engineer and sometimes information sidekick. That'd be Bill Guy. Also, Jeffrey Putnam in the world of trivia. And our announcer, Donald Jr. Well, I will see you, or better yet, hear you. You'll hear me next week. I am Lisa Smith Putnam, and you're listening to Your Pets, My Dogs. All I have to say is rough to you. Your Pets, My Dogs is produced and owned by Lisa Smith Putnam Productions. Your Pets, My Dogs.
Your pets, my dogs. Let's talk pets every week on demand only on PetLifeRadio.com.